today I want to talk to you guys about nonprofits and for profits. In a way, I want to spin this video in sort of a context where a lot of people in the permaculture community and in the organic agriculture umbrella have a really difficult time with profit. And I want to address this issue because I see these questions and comments a lot. Um, a bit of my context, I have been consulting for farms all over North America for quite a while now, I, I don't know, at least four years I think, and a lot in the last two years, and I've consulted for a lot of non-profits as well. In fact, anytime I've done bigger consulting jobs, they've always been for non-profits. And I want to address the issue uh, that people have with profit. So I'll, I'll talk specifically about non-profit entities and for-profit and for -profit entities and how they differ and some might be, there's pros and cons to both. But I just want to talk a little bit about my experience in the non-profit sector because you guys all know, if you know my content, you know my experience in the for-profit uh, sector because that's what I do. I run a for-profit business. Um, but I want to talk a little bit about non-profits. So one thing, you know, a, a lot of nonprofits or most nonprofits have a sort of greater mission, right? They have uh, they they have a mission statement, right? The, w what they want to accomplish. And in the organic food and permaculture sector, a lot of those mission statements or uh, a common mission statement is to food underprivileged communities. So this is where the urban agriculture part comes into play, and this is where where I've done a lot of work is is going to these these groups and, and and helping them change their production systems to be more productive essentially and um, so one thing I've seen is that a lot of these nonprofits that have this mission to serve underprivileged communities pretty much most of them that I've consulted for have come to this hard realization that does not sound good and so I'm more of a person that's that's interested in facts and results than I am on feelings and how things sound good. So I'm going to put some blunt honesty out here and I apologize if some people find this offensive but this is just my experience and what I've seen. So you can start a farm and say I want to service underprivileged communities in this neighborhood and so on and so forth. But the, the question you should be asking is what do people in those communities want and what are they willing to pay and how much are they willing to pay and if the question if the answer is they're not interested and they don't want to pay for it and then your response is well then we're just going to give it to them for free there's two things you're doing that are not helping you or the greater cause the first thing is you're not making any money doing this right and so it's you are going to be completely reliant on money from external sources and if you have a problem with profit then getting money from the profit sector doesn't really um, change your predicament right it, it, by, by taking money as a nonprofit doesn't exclude you from the profit sector or the whole uh, capitalist system it doesn't at all in fact it makes you more of a benefic beneficiary of it than anything the other thing, the second thing, is that if you want to go out and grow organic food in an urban farm, which is a great thing to do, but then you want to go and give it away to people in these underprivileged communities, the thing you're doing that is not helping your cause and not helping those people is you are giving the message to, say, young, some young folks in that, in that community that organic food isn't worth much because it's free. And like the old saying goes, easy come, easy go. Things that are given to us are undervalued, whereas things that are expensive are highly valued. This is intrinsic economics of the human experience. This exists everywhere. It has nothing to do with the financial system. This is just how values work in human societies. So by doing that, giving that to those, those kids or these people, you're sending a message to them that, for one, vegetables and farming isn't really worth very much, and another, that you're not really going to make much of a living at it either. And I don't think that helps the cause, because I would love to see kids in these communities take up careers as farmers, because farmers can make money. This is, the, this is what I show people. This is what I'm, this is my whole 
this is all, everything I do in my content is showing people how they can make a living doing this. And it is not very empowering if you have, if you're telling people that they're going to be given things for free. How, how does that get them out of poverty? It does, it, it's like, it's like, it's like dropping buckets of food and money down to people down below instead of lowering a ladder and saying, hey, come on up. You can come up here. There's lots of room. And it takes work. It takes, it takes a lot of effort and sometimes suffering, but you can do it. And I think that is the, the, the difference in the message. I'm more interested in empowering people so that they can enable themselves and find their own self-determination opposed to just throwing them crumbs and saying, here you go, we know that you can't take care of yourself so we're gonna take care of you for you. I find it, I find it frankly, um, insulting. If I, if I, if I would, was somebody in that situation, knowing what I know now, I would be insulted. But I don't think that's the intention. It's absolutely not the intention of people who run nonprofits. Um, so th th this is this is an issue I see across the board, and often what happens most uh, commonly with a lot of these nonprofit companies is that they eventually lose steam because um, there isn't a real driver behind it. Because you you just have to go and beg for money all the time. You can't be economically independent. So there is a, a solution in this, and I've seen this in some nonprofits that do it well. Um, most that I've seen don't do it well, but some do it well in the sense that they become economically sustainable by producing a product that sells and they make money and then they go make money and then they can bring it back to the community. So if you feel that people in your underprivileged community need food and they need to, they want it and you want them to understand your value system, which is to say organic food, clean food, all these kinds of things, but they currently don't, you're better off going to sell your product in the privileged communities that are willing to pay for it at a good price, get that money, create an economic system that draws interest from the children in that community to say, hey, I want to be like that person because they're making money. Because let's be honest, kids, uh, <laughs> let's, let's be honest, people, uh, uh, confusing my subject and my, my, um, my content. Um, let's be honest here. Little kids in underprivileged communities aren't really sitting there thinking about food justice and food security. They're thinking, I want to have money like the guy that I see on the television, or I want to, I want to have something for myself. I want to do well for myself. And what a better way to do it than to show a profitable model of a farm and demonstrate to those kids, hey, you can make money too. You can be like me. You can you can be a farmer and make money. You can drive a nice car. Not not saying that these are the things that we need to tell people to do. I'm just saying I'm trying to meet people at their level instead of me imposing my values on them to say, "Hey, this is working. We're making money. Don't you want to be a part of this?" This model is going to be in the long term a lot more sustainable in my opinion because it's going to get people engaged and want to farm. Here's the other thing I want to address with this is the problem that many people in the permaculture community and I mentioned this at the beginning ha that have with the word profit and making a profit. I get a lot of comments and emails where people say I love what you're doing but I just don't want I don't want to be associated with profit. Well here's the thing to put it really plainly how do you pay your rent? Like, what are you doing right now to pay your bills? Because we all need to pay bills, right? We've got mortgages, rent, we've got groceries, we've got health care for our kids, we've got a variety of things that we have to pay for in our day-to-day -day life. How are you paying for yours? Are you paying, paying it by going to a job that you don't like? And are you saying that you want to work at that job and then work as a, at a farm for free to make free food for people? There's a lot of problems with this whole this line of thinking because for one if that's what you're doing you're gonna burn out because you're gonna go make money somewhere that you don't like doing with something that you don't like doing to go and work for free with something that you like doing why would you not want to make money at something you love doing that you know is doing a good thing to further your cause and then make a living at the same time see it's a win-win so I understand the, the problem that a lot of people have with profit it particularly comes down to externalities. So that's an economic term, meaning that 
when a profit is made or a, a, um, a business transaction happens, there is something that is uh, has a negative effect. Um, for us who consider ourselves conscious capitalists like myself and are aware of these things, these would be things like the, uh, the product of something you sell that is a waste product. So in my case, like I have externalities, right? I'm, I'm, our farm isn't perfect. We have plastic bags. That's an externality, right? So I grow a product that I know is good for the soil, that builds soil. I know it's good for the community. There's a lot of win, 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 win in this, but the one externality I can point out that's really easy to find is a plastic bag. So am I happy about that? No, absolutely. But am I going to curl up in a ball and cry and say it's not worth it if I, if I have to deal with an externality? No. It's do it and we'll solve these externalities as we go. I've been trying to find the best biodegradable or compostable product for years. I've been meaning to make a video about this for a long time. I'll address it quickly. I wasn't filming videos back in the day when I was trying all these different products, but I've tried all kinds of stuff. I've done wax paper bags, different types of paper bags. I've done compostable containers. I've done biodegradable plastic bags. I've tried all kinds of products and none of them really work for a variety of different reasons. Often the ones that say they're compostable aren't, aren't compostable. I tried and I still have in my compost bin these chunks of compostable, compostable plastic in there. And these to say that's a big subject or a whole other subject altogether. But Externalities are going to exist and what we need to do as conscious capitalists and people that want to do good in the world is we need to do business because we need to make a living, right? That's just the reality of it. If I'm not making a living on my farm, I'm making a living somewhere else and I guarantee it's not going to be as good as what I can do on my farm. It's not going to do as much good in the world as what I do on my farm. So I've accept these externalities and I want to work towards finding better ones. And so this is where huge market opportunities exist for people to solve that problem because it's just a problem to be solved. Why can't somebody create a compostable, a perfectly compostable type of plastic bag? I don't know. I've looked for it. I haven't found it. I know that problem can be solved. With technology today, we're in solving incredible problems. So let's solve that problem. But back on the part about profit is that a lot of people seem to think that the only way we can save the world or help the world is to do things strictly out of being benevolent. But let me ask you this question. When you go to the grocery store or when you pay for any service that you have every single day, what, no matter what that product is, and it can be the most sustainable, local, organic, biodegradable product you can imagine, are you getting that product based on benevolence or a person's own self-interest? So this is a tough question to ask because myself, I was a very liberal lefty for a long time and when I started hearing this kind of talk, it, I got a knee-jerk reaction. It really scared me. And so, because I think it's the truth that we are fed, the world is fed not by benevolence. The world is fed by people's own self-interest. Think about a city. Think about New York City. How much food has to be imported into New York City every single day to feed those people? Do you think any of that comes through benevolence? Maybe some of it does, but what percentage? Do you think, do you think farmers like myself and cattle ranchers in the Midwest get up every day at 4 a.m. on benevolence? Or do you think they get up because they need to feed their families and provide for themselves? So that's self-interest, and it's not necessarily a bad thing. Every single thing on this planet acts in its own self-interest, whether it's the single-celled amoeba, that has to duplicate and grow and take care of its own genes and its own self, or it's the lion in the jungle that has to survive and, and provide for its family. We all work in our own self-interest and it's not a bad thing. The beautiful thing, and this is what's great about capitalism in a sense, is that, and I'm not saying it's a perfect system, but what's great about it is that we can both win. We can come together and acting in our own self-interest and find a mutually beneficial arrangement that we both walk away from and win from. So that's what I like about capitalism. I'm far more partial to capitalism than, than I am something like communism that sounds benevolent when you provide for everybody but it involves the taxation and the subjugation of certain groups of people. Whereas when we come together on a win-win, we can both walk away happier and better off. Right? So somebody comes to buy vegetables for me, they need those vegetables more than they need that money. So we both walk away pleased and happy. 
So yes, there is an externality in that. That could be the plastic bag, no doubt about it. But let's move forward. Let, let's, let's, let's at least take a shot at making things sustainable than just saying, oh, well, if it can't be perfect, then I'm not gonna try. Because if you do that, then nobody wins. So the message here is, guys, the system isn't perfect, but it's not gonna get any better without you trying. All right, I hope you guys have found that helpful. We'll talk to you later. Bye.